So we're gonna do a Q&A today. And uh, so I, I brewed some coffee. I got your questions and um, I got your answers too, hopefully. So yeah, hot coffee that can go over here. And well, no, maybe it could be in the shot still, right? Maybe you can look at the coffee. No, who cares? Okay. I sent the call out to you guys to ask me as many questions as you wanted to. And well, it turns out there was a lot. You guys have a lot that you wanna know about me and I hopefully have the answers for you. We're gonna get into all these questions. There's a bunch of them. We're gonna answer as many as we can until I lose interest. So let's just go for it, really. So question number one, uh, by far the most asked question. Why do I live abroad? Why am I in Europe? So I'd say in early, Early 2018, I was working full time in Toronto and Canada, where I'm from, Canadian guy. And um, I had a good job. It wasn't the job, it was more something about me. I just wanted kind of a change. And I was starting to think about like, you know, what else I could do? I was kind of working sidebar on anti-chef at the time, just like starting to get it going. And I was really enjoying making my own videos and kind of working for myself in that capacity. And at the same time, uh, my girlfriend uh, at the time, who is now my wife, Christy, you have met her. A job opportunity came up for her to work in Brussels, in Belgium. And uh, it was kind of an interesting idea for both of us. We were both looking for something different and kind of came at the exact right time in our lives. And I didn't really know where Brussels was at the time, um, <laughs> shamefully enough. And Belgium, chocolate and waffles, that's about it. And I had always wanted to travel around Europe and, and live abroad. It seemed like a, something I wanted to do at least once in my life. And this opportunity came up for her and we talked it over. And yeah, we decided let's do it. And she moved out to Belgium first. I stayed back for three months, just kind of tying up loose ends, saving as much as I could, and then I joined her out in Belgium. And that is the story of why we are living abroad. Why do I now live in London? Well, the job in Brussels came to an end. We were almost flirting with the idea of moving back to Canada, but it's just like another job opportunity came up uh, at this time in London. And perfect timing because we didn't know what we were gonna do next. and. Here we are in London. Where are you from? Yeah, as I mentioned, I am Canadian dude. I was living in Toronto, but I grew up uh, about an hour outside of Toronto in a town called Guelph. What did you do before YouTube? Before, let's just say before all this Europe stuff, I was working in the film and television industry in Toronto on different shows and movies and all that. I was in visual effects. That's like all the digital craziness that goes on after a show is filmed. So like spaceships and explosions and gunshots and zit removal. I worked at a studio in Toronto, so it was like, I wasn't an artist per se. I can't do all that, the creative parts of that stuff. All the shots, because we worked on different shots, right? So any shot that came into the studio to everything that came out and went into the finished movie or whatever. Um, I worked on every part of that process besides like the artistic part of it. So I was doing that for like, I mean, I had been working in film and TV for like eight, 10 years or whatever. And visual effects editor is like four years or something. Worked on a lot of cool movies, a lot of cool shows. Working in film and TV is, is a different thing. It's like, that is your life. You know, it's a lifestyle choice. It's hard work and long hours, but um, you know, some people love it. And for me personally, I just was like looking for something new. What is your day job outside of YouTube? Why am I losing my voice? <clears throat> right now is a very funny time because I moved to Belgium knowing that I wasn't gonna be able to work right off the bat. You have to apply for the visa, that takes time. It's like nine months for me to get that visa. And during that period, it was just like a waiting period. Couldn't really work. I focused on anti-chef and growing the channel into something, which was great. It gave me something to do each day and some, something to motivate me because 
Without that, it would have been a very long wait. And by the time I got the visa, uh, our time in Belgium was coming to an end. And when we were moving to London, a little thing called uh, COVID-19 started. And the lockdowns and the pandemic has really just, you know, changed things up a bit. So I haven't been able to, to do much besides wait for the, the, the pandemic to ride its course. We'll be having to get a job very soon. Um, very soon. What inspired you to make a YouTube channel? Uh, it's pretty simple. I wanted to be a director and like a filmmaker in my early 20s. So I started a YouTube channel to like release all those types of things, like short films. I made a feature film. That was like my baby in my 20s. If you ever want to check any of this stuff out, it's all at the beginning of my YouTube video history. Um, just scroll to the bottom and you'll check it out. But the, the feature length film is called Howls. This was a big thing for me. I invested a lot of my time and money and trying to make this into something that would you know, be a starting point for my movie directing career. And it didn't really work out that way. And so I released it on YouTube. And thankfully people found it on there and they're able to watch it and a lot of people like it, a lot of people hate it, but it doesn't matter to me because people are watching it, which was the end goal. So that is why I started a YouTube channel. Um, that's obviously, uh, it's changed quite a bit throughout the years into something new. So I'm losing my voice, I don't know why. Uh, so I'm gonna heat up some, some water with some lemon, some honey, and try to, I'm just talking too much. So what made you start Anti-Chef? Um, that idea came from me like, just wanting to make more movies and films and all that kind of stuff. And my love of making videos is what led me to to start this show. You know, as you get older, it's just like, it was becoming more difficult for me to make big movie ideas and the speed of which everyone is releasing content and me just like taking so long to make just a film. Well, everyone was just moving much quicker than I was. So I understood that, you know, people started vlogging and I was like, well, I could do a vlog because it, it's like making a movie about yourself. And that was a very intriguing premise at first and then it became a bit awkward. So just like the idea of like coming up with what you're gonna vlog about all the time. Anyway, a good thing came from the vlogging, which was this, uh, I made a vlog about me uh, not knowing how to cook, which I knew nothing about cooking at the time. And then me filming myself trying to cook something complicated. Uh, which is like, it's literally the premise of this show, but it started off as like a little vlog. That was like the main idea for Anti-Chef. And from there, it just kind of blossomed into this, this other thing, which was, okay, let's take that idea and just run with it. So each episode of, of a video could be me cooking something new. And it just starts with something like a very complicated thing. Like what gourmet thing can you cook today? knowing that you can't cook. It'd be interesting to see a cooking show from the perspective of someone that can't cook. I'm, I've never seen that before. So I started it off and I just kept going and uh, I haven't stopped. It's hot, but it's gonna help. I chose to start standing. If you haven't noticed, I got ditched the chair. It wasn't very comfortable. What is your favorite Beatles song? Oh, uh, my favorite Beatles song is um, A Day in the Life. That's my favorite song of all time. What are your go-to recipes? It's hard to take a lot of things that I make on this show and just use them as go-to recipes. And when I'm learning new recipes, it's mostly on this show. So there's other things that I cook, obviously. There's a good recipe I follow. Uh, it's a cauliflower chickpea taco recipe. It's not mine, but make it all the time. It's it's a mainstay over here. I'll link them down below if you want to check it out because I, I make it all the time. It's it's delicious. How do you not put on weight with all the baking you do? Um, I do put on weight, I put on weight, and then I have to exercise to take it off. It's just, uh, nothing is free. You know, if I'm gonna eat cake, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work for it. So, um, yeah, it's just a vicious cycle. <laughs> How does it feel living in London? Uh, right now it feels very funny because uh, of the lockdowns, of COVID. I've always wanted to live here and explore it, and I'm excited for the opportunity to do that when it is safe to do it. What is your favorite movie soundtrack? Uh, I really like 
like Hans Zimmer, uh, Interstellar is a perfect one. Uh, was the grasshopper pie really supposed to have graham cracker crust? Uh, yes. What is your earliest memory of cooking and baking? Yeah, I didn't know how to cook and bake when I was a kid, obviously, so uh, my idea of cooking would be um, uh, macaroni and cheese from the box, Kraft Dinner, KD in Canada. I'd make that on a weekend or after school or whatever, and that was my idea of cooking. Or like, I was really into tuna melts at some point, you know, like English muffin and tuna and cheese and bake it. That was something. I also had a high school job. I worked at a chicken rotisserie place uh, called, uh, it's Canadian, it's called Swish LA. And I did everything from making the fries to, to cooking the chicken and cutting it up and uh, I almost cut my finger off for prom. Could you attempt a vegan baking recipe? Yes, I will do another one. I have done one. I did the vegan black bean brownies, but I, I, I will do another one, yes. How do you choose recipes? It's a bit from everywhere, to be honest. It's like I look on Instagram, I eat food from somewhere, or I see something on the internet, or it's trending, or a TV show, or whatever. I just get the inspiration from everywhere. What did you study at university? I didn't go to university, I went to film school, and I studied film. How did you and your wife meet? Uh, we met online. What motivates you to keep making videos? Um, what motivates me? I think it's just my, I, I want to be successful. I want to work for myself one day. I'd love to work for myself and be successful doing this exact thing. So what drives me to make videos is just that dream really. And um, that, keeps me, that keeps me going. It keeps me moving forward. And working hard is gonna be the, the factor to being successful, so I just, Make sure I keep making as many videos as I can. What's your favorite thing in the kitchen? Um, I really love this thing right here, the stand mixer. That's a new one, but it's an expensive one, so. Uh, ow! Another one was this, this mixer here. I love this guy. Um, The offset spatulas, love these things too. And I really love this rubber spatula. It's nothing more gratifying than, you know, getting all the inside of that bowl of whatever you're cooking, baking, whatever. Uh, those are all great, those are my favorites. How to make mayonnaise, please bud. How to make mayonnaise. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's like egg yolks and vinegar and lemon juice, and something else. Mustard. I don't know, when did you start cooking? I started in, well, I started the day the show started, which is late 2017, episode one. That was, that was the first day I started cooking, like legitimately. So what was the first food you made on YouTube? I made enchiladas for the vlog thingamajig I was telling you about, and um, well, green pancakes and lime butter for the very first episode of Anti-Chef. Uh, of course, watch watch all the old work. Yes, that's why it's there. What recipe would you like to make every day that you would never get tired of? Pizza. <laughs> um, oh, croissants. I love croissants. Thank you very much, Belgium. Greek food. I just got back from Greece. Uh, I was in Santorini and the Greek food there was 10 out of 10. What was the most challenging dish you've made? Uh, most recently, the cronuts. I have haunting nightmares of the unicorn cake, Japanese fluffy pancakes, that gingerbread house from hell, and macarons. Those gotta be, those gotta be the most challenging and the ones that cause me the most stress. What movie or book character do you most identify with? Uh, I don't know. Indiana Jones, touring around Europe looking for clues. Well, when are you gonna try to make Indian food? I'm going to, I'm gonna do something like that uh, soon. I wanna know like what are good Indian desserts I could make. What makes you love cooking? I think what I love about cooking and baking and all that is just that you can, you, you can improve 
and the more you do it, the more you get better and you can learn new skills and techniques and you can carry them into other recipes. You use them every day, right? So it's important to know how to do these things and if you keep doing it a lot and try to get better, you're gonna get better. And I'm speaking on behalf of myself and what I've experienced the last few years, but for anyone, it's just that's what I love about cooking is the fact that you can just, if you try to get better, you're gonna get better, regardless of what you think. How do I convince my, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice again. How do I convince my father to let me be a chef? Help. I think you need to take everything that I just said, use it in everyday life, focus on just perfecting this one thing. You wanna be a chef, then then own it and, and make it your life and cook for your father as often as you can. Cook him good food, convince him that you're up for the task and you can go from there, really. That's how I would do it. What's your favorite YouTube channel? Well, I have a favorite YouTube channel. It has nothing to do with cooking. It's called Red Letter Media. It's like reviews movies in a very funny and original way and that's always been my favorite YouTube channel. In terms of cooking, uh-oh. Well, that depends on what I'm making, I think. I, I watch cooking YouTube videos to understand what I'm about to make. And it goes in waves, like I'll have a favorite one and then I, I won't watch it for a bit. I'm not gonna say bon appetit, that's for sure. That, that, was, that was a time, wasn't it? Do you want kids? Yes, one day. <laughs> How old are you? When is your birthday? 34, January 23rd, 1986. Is YouTube your full-time job? Uh, no. Lately, I've been devoting my full-time energy into it, but I wouldn't say it's a full-time job yet. I mean, a job gives you uh, money, right? <laughs> Do you think you'll ever publish your own cookbook? Uh, I think that all depends on where I can take anti-chef, where it goes from here. If it were to really grow into something else, um, yeah, definitely for sure. I have ideas of where I could take some sort of cookbook like that. Um, but I guess I have to see where things go. Uh, what's your pre-filming hair routine? Um, <laughs> uh, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little product, boom, ba, bada, bing, or sometimes a wear hat. Favorite places you have lived? I don't have a favorite place specifically. I have favorite parts of each place that I've lived and I kind of just take a part of each place that I have lived and take it with me everywhere I go, right? It's all bundled up in this, uh, package here. What is your death row meal? You know when you order takeout Indian food and you get a whole bunch of different things so there's like tikka masala and chana masala and the butter chicken and some garlic naan bread and some uh, palak paneer and some uh, samosas and <sighs> that sounds pretty good. Do you enjoy cooking savory meals or is your passion baking? Of course I love cooking savory meals. Obviously I you have to do that every day. I love a good, well-made, savory meal. Uh, I can't really explain to you exactly why my channel turned more into the baking and to dessert making than it did the savory. There's obviously a reason I'm gravitated more towards that, I would think. I think I like the baking part of like the meticulous, like if you, you screw any of those ingredients up, it's gonna turn out differently. Like, your cake's not gonna rise if you don't put enough blah, blah, blah in baking soda. What do you cook day to day? Well, weekdays I cook healthy foods like chickens and salmon and veggies and, and chase it down with a glass of water. Oatmeal for breakfast, you know the drill. And for weekends, I just have a little more fun. Did Christina Tozzi ever send that package like she said she would? Uh, no, she definitely did not send it. A little context, when I made my first Milk Bar video, well, I sent it to Christina Tozzi, who's the creator of Milk Bar, and she watched it and she liked it. She shared it and she sent me a message and she's like, I really liked your video. I wanna send you a package of Milk Bar goodies. And I was, I was like, of course, yeah, here's my address. It was very early on in Anti-Chef, so I was like, I can't believe someone like this had watched my video, so I was amped about it. And the package never showed up. I don't know what happened. And a full year went by and I made another video and I kind of called her out in the video. I was like, uh, I never got this package. I asked all you guys to share the video to her. She saw it. She sent me another message where she's like, oh my God, I can't believe what happened here. There must've been a problem with the shipping. I'll send you another package. What's your address? And I gave her my, my new Belgian address and uh, I never got that package either. 
So two packages lost in the mail or something. I don't know, I've moved on and I'm sure she has too. But you know, it would have been nice to receive the goodies. Um, you know, it would have. What's your most ambitious bake and would you ever give the croissant a go? And of course my most ambitious bake was the cronut, which was basically a croissant. And I still have a lot to improve with the croissant and I want to make an actual croissant, not just a cronut. And I will one day, but I need time to heal from the corona. Is it difficult living in Belgium as a Canadian? Yes, it was not easy. The visa process uh, for someone like me who uh, was moving there under those circumstances and being over 30, it was not an easy thing to do. All the paperwork that was involved, all the documents that I needed, there's a whole checklist of them, just like 10, 20 documents you need, you know, just to put it into perspective, all those documents that I had that are like English, speaking documents, you have to get those translated, like legally, right? And then you have to get them stamped and signed and two different countries involved and they need to be certified and there's all these different things you need to do just to apply for that visa. And there was like a time limit for when that you had to apply with all this stuff. Once you've done that, there's this waiting period, like I mentioned, where it's like nine, up to nine months, which it totally was. And in those nine months, I had no real like information of what was going on. There was no updates like where you were in the approval process. So it was all a big guessing game if you were gonna get approved, if you weren't, when that was gonna happen. The ball is not in your court. So you really just have to accept that and try to deal with it as best as you can. There was no real reason for them to deny what I was doing, but without much time, with no communication, it starts getting to your head. So there's like a mental thing too. It was difficult. And, uh, but it's totally worth it to be able to live in another country like that under those circumstances. You know, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to do that. And of course it was, um, it was worth it. And I saw a lot of cool parts of Belgium, man. Very cool. Favorite restaurant, just cause I was there a couple days ago, I'm gonna say the Sunset Taverna in Santorini, in Ia. It's like this place called Moody Bay. It's just down the steps from a top of the cliffs and you walk down the steps 300 steps into this seafood restaurant right along the water the sunset just like setting right beside you while you eat fresh seafood and all these amazing greek dips and and, and the baklava what is your guilty pleasure uh this whole show is the guilty pleasure it's one big old guilty pleasure i make cakes and i eat them what is your biggest pet peeve uh right now uh, definitely people that don't wear masks properly. Don't know. It's pretty simple. You just put it on your, covering your mouth and your nose. I don't know why it's so challenging for some people. Or people that just don't wear masks. That's frustrating. Or uh, maybe like cigarette butts on the ground or like litter on the beach in like the sand in like all the little pebbles. You'll find like a cigarette or a straw or something. What is the make and model of your kitchen torch you are using? Are you still using the one you got from the hardware store? Yes, I am still using that. So I bought this one kitchen torch from a cooking store and it, it wouldn't work for me. I didn't really like it. So I went to the hardware store and just bought like this freaking thing. Uh, it's by a company, I don't know, it's, it says, uh, what does it say? Wellco, Wellco. And it's, I mean, it's a monster. Which countries have you visited? Uh, oh, okay. United States, Peru, Colombia, Honduras, Curacao, Iceland, Germany, Spain, France, Czech Republic, Netherlands, Belgium, obviously, Greece. I think that's it. I think that's it. The last question is why are you so messy? Um, I don't know why. Um, I guess when it comes to certain things, I'm messy. I mean, you should see my like handwriting. That's, uh, I've always been like messy in certain things and not messy in other things. With cooking and like learning new things, it's like complicated stuff and it just drives me to throw shit around, I guess. I don't know, it just shit happens. I'm messy sometimes. I don't, I don't think I'm messy right now. Look how clean this place looks. And that's it. I think I answered all those questions as best as I could. I hope you are satisfied with those answers. 
I'll do another one of these videos in the future. So if I didn't get to your question or if you have more, just let me know in the future. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Any of the videos that I've, I've mentioned, I'm gonna leave linked down below. If you wanna check out my older videos, just go cruise through memory video lane uh, on my channel. Of course, subscribe to this channel if you're liking what you're seeing. If you wanna support the show, there's a Patreon. I have Instagram too. If you wanna check me out on Instagram, say hi to me over there. That is totally cool too. I'll see you guys soon.